Shift drive charging. Four, three, two, one, engage. Shift drive charging. Shift drive charging.
triumph of Salvation. Salvation has confirmed that his anti-Zeno superweapon successfully routed Thargoids from the Delphi, Maya and Merib systems. The following message was submitted to all news feeds. The Thargoid spearhead into human space has been severely blunted. Commodore Halloran coordinated the operation with military precision, and many loyal pilots acted swiftly to provide components for my unique technology. At present, I am not able to deploy these weapons in other systems suffering alien infestation. Next year, we will deliver a decisive blow in the war against the Thargoids. I urge the peoples of the galaxy to unite behind my crusade. Aegis is finished. I am the only remaining defense for humanity. I am Salvation. Independent pilots and anti-Zeno squadrons have been asked to continue combating the remaining Thargoid vessels in the Colsac, Pleiades and Witchhead Nebula regions. Repair efforts are also still required in the Delphi, Maya and Merib systems. The Winking Cat's Treasure Hunt. has claimed that the winking cat thief has something planned for the weeks ahead. After our investigation into the Joker's deck gambling circle, Wolf and I were hired to track down their stolen ceremonial playing card. The good news is that we now have the card in our possession. We can hardly claim credit, however. It was posted to us by the one who stole it. The ancient Joker card arrived via a courier service with no data as to its point of origin but the playing card now has text stamped on the back, which I'm convinced is intended to be a public message. It simply reads the hunt is on and is followed by two sets of numbers. One, two, three, 16th to 30th, 
four, five, six, twenty-third to sixth. At the bottom is a drawing of, you guessed it, a smirking, winking cat's face. It's speculation, of course, but some of these numbers must be dates. Perhaps this hunt is scheduled to happen over the next three weeks. Are we being invited to hunt the winking cat, or will something else be the prize? The feline thief has been busy of late, purloining everything from prized artwork to prototype robots. Entertainment mogul Oscar Goldsum recently reported that his private collection of rarities had been hit, and there are rumors that World Craft Corporation's vaults were somehow broken into. How that crime spree connects to this message is a mystery that we've yet to crack. NMLA Megaship becomes Marlinist flagship. The Megaship Steel Majesty has traveled from Madrid to the HIP 22550 system and been renamed as Fairfax Vision. The Welsh class carrier was originally owned by the Neo Marlinist Order of Madrid and used as a base for the NMLA terrorist group. After a military defeat, the vessel's crew sought political asylum in the Marlinist colonies. The Steel Majesty later became the hub for Minister Aaron White's followers during the Marlinist Civil War. More recently, NMLA activists retook the ship and unsuccessfully tried to rescue their leader Theta-7. The Marlin Standard published this statement from First Minister Octavia Volkov. I am delighted that the Marlinist Consulate has negotiated with the Epsilon Fornarchis Empire Group to arrange for this megaship to be returned to us. We are renaming it in honor of my predecessor, Dr. Jenna Fairfax, who led millions to safety after our mass exodus from the Empire. The Fairfax vision is now controlled by the Free Marlinists of Karini faction, but will represent the colony's parliamentary and diplomatic interests abroad. I hope that true Marlinism and our progressive Republican society can now flourish peacefully.
Salvation recruits naval crews. The recent counter-strike against the Thargoids has revealed that Salvation is being unofficially supported by trained military personnel. Commodore Morag Halloran was a senior officer with the Alliance Defense Force who is now working for Salvation. She sent this statement to the media. Over the last few years, I have fought hard to protect allied interests from the Thargoids. But every battle against them felt like a defensive measure, a holding action. I'm convinced that these creatures are more than capable of wiping us all out. When an entire Thargoid fleet was forced out of the Khonsar system in September, I approached the Council of Admirals about sending ships to help, but my proposal was rejected. Then Salvation contacted me directly, saying that he required military leadership and my experiences in the Colsac Nebula made me an ideal candidate. Along with Lieutenant Commander Glynn and nearly a hundred crewmates, we resigned our commissions and headed for Hindmine. I now command many others who were recruited from the Federal, Imperial and Sirius navies to serve on the Taurus megaships and elsewhere. I'm aware that some will view my actions as dereliction of duty, but I believe our true duty is to stop the Thargoids at any cost. And as our recent success proves, only Salvation has the means of doing so. The Alliance Assembly, Federal Congress and Imperial Senate have all acknowledged the loss of some military personnel to Salvation's cause. While efforts are being made to prevent further losses, it is rumored that potential concessions include official support for Salvation's anti-Zeno activities. The Winking Cat's Treasure Hunt. Pilots Federation. Theta 7's identity discovered. ACT has revealed the background of the man known only as Theta 7, the NMLA's de facto leader who recently died in the Mudrid system. Captain Saskia Landau gave this statement to the media. A combination of investigative work and interrogating NMLA survivors has allowed us to confirm that Theta 7's real name was John Tyburn. He was born and raised in the city of Fontaine on the planet Baltazine where he was a munitions technician constructing demolition charges for commercial mining. There is evidence that Tyburn was always a vocal believer in Marlinism, and became a pro-democracy campaigner. This eventually caused him to lose his job and serve a prison sentence for sedition. His imperial citizenship was revoked, his marriage annulled, and his children taken into state care. Upon release, Tyburn was contacted by the NMLA and radicalized to the Neo-Marlinist cause. He produced portable explosives for terrorist actions and rose rapidly in their ranks. It was Tyburn's proposal to develop caustic enzyme bombs capable of damaging a starport, but his experimentation on these weapons resulted in injuries and corrosive scarring. They only became a reality following a workable design commissioned from the engineer Liz Ryder without her knowledge of its purpose. First Minister Octavia Volkov of the Marlinist colonies commented, It's unsettling to learn that this arch-terrorist grew up in the same place as I did and had similar experiences. John Tyburn might easily have been my fellow refugee from the Empire, or perhaps helped us form a Republican society. This does not excuse his crimes, but it's all too clear how political persecution can give rise to monsters. Thargoid presence persists in multiple systems. Pilots Federation alert. The Colsac, Pleiades and Witch Head Nebulas continue to see an influx of Thargoid vessels. Freelance war correspondent Ernesto Rios reported for Vox Galactica. Over the last few months, Thargoid ships have appeared in over two dozen populated systems including Shinv, 
Pleiades Sector IV C25 and Colsac Sector VU OB66. All are in the vicinity of nebulas, which seem to be favored by the Thargoids. In some systems, organized task forces of independent pilots have successfully hunted and destroyed the invaders. But in others, their efforts are undone by Thargoid reinforcements continually dropping out of hyperspace. There have been public demands to know why more superweapons have yet to be deployed. However, Salvation has not responded to this. Some of his supporters believe that it takes time to stockpile the weapon's resources, while others maintain that Salvation is focused on a master plan to permanently eliminate the Thargoid threat. Until then, individual commanders and anti-Xeno squadrons remain fighting on the front line against the escalating Thargoid incursion. The Winking Cat's Treasure Hunt. Pilots for... Galnet. Unauthorized messages. Pilots Federation alert. The editorial team at Galnet would like to apologize for the recent articles originating from an unofficial source. On the 17th, 18th and 19th of December, our publication network transmitted text messages of unknown origin. These articles were not officially commissioned or approved and should not have been available via Galnet channels. Galnet formally apologizes to all commanders for this unprecedented disruption to our regular service. As yet we have no explanation as to how these illicit transmissions were inserted into our regular feeds. Our technical teams are currently investigating, and we are confident that this situation will not reoccur. The New phase for Alliance Serious Partnership the Alliance Assembly has invited Sirius Corporation to collaborate on enhancing protection for member systems against the Thargoids. Political journalist Vanya Driscoll reported on the development for the Alliance Tribune. Sirius Corporation has been a key partner in the Alliance's expansion program. Most notably, its subsidiary Sirius Atmospherics helped establish colonies in the Colsac Nebula to support meta-alloy harvesting. But according to insiders, the suspension of Aegis and the increasing Thargoid presence has raised fears that Alliance systems may be vulnerable to Xeno invasion. This has led to Prime Minister Edmund Mann suggesting a strategic defense contract with the Megacorp. In response, CEO Li Yong Rui himself has traveled to the Alioth system. It's understood that high-level discussions are taking place on ways in which the company might augment the Alliance Defense Forces capabilities. Councillor Nakato Kane, Mann's political rival, has repeated her claim that Sirius Corporation has a disturbing amount of influence over some council members. She fears that private agreements are being made behind closed doors and has called for increased transparency.
winking cat's treasure hunt. Pilots Federation alert. Eric Gunnarsson of the War Glass Investigations Agency provides an overview of the winking cat's latest escapade. The meaning of the message scrolled on the back of the Joker's deck ceremonial playing card has become clear. This time, the galaxy's most infamous larcenist is actually giving away treasure rather than stealing it. Three mysterious riddles were somehow inserted into the Galnet feed over the last week. Commanders have reported that clues within these riddles led them to three concealed caches, each in a different system. According to the date specified by the Winking Cat, these three caches will only be operational for a two-week period, ending on the 30th of December. We can then deduce that caches 4, 5 and 6 will activate today, and likewise remain available for the next two weeks. This is not the first philanthropic gesture from the Winking Cat. The long-lost painting Pennant Street reappeared in 3305 alongside the thief's signature graphic of a cheeky feline face, but this is a more generous giveaway. Some even see it as a redistribution of wealth, noting that the winking cat only ever targets corporations, governments, or super-rich individuals. The winking cat's treasure hunt. Pilots Federation alert.
complete.
Orbital flight engaged. 